So in this video, I want to talk about when to go for game. Now, what I mean by that is at what point do you decide that you're going to try and pot all of your balls and the black ball to win the game? Now, that probably sounds a bit strange to some people because they're thinking, well, surely that's the whole point of the game is to pot all of your balls in the black and win the game. And that's true. And we're used to seeing professionals come to the table, smash the balls open, spread them up nicely. Great cue ball control, go around, clear up on one visit and win the match. But these guys are professionals. They've been playing for years. They practice hour on hour and they've got great cue ball control. And for them, it's just about how consistently they can do that. And particularly when the balls don't fall nicely, how well they can develop things to, to get those clearances. But when you're starting out in the game, and this channel is aimed primarily at people who are learning the game, starting out in the game, you have to be realistic about what you can achieve. And let's be honest, most of us are not going to clear the table in one go every time we come to the table. And there's a fundamental problem with trying to do that from the outset, um, which I'm going to try and explain in this video. So if I just break the balls up here. So, um, potted one of each off the break and a player might come to the table and think, oh, well, there's nothing much on the yellows I've got a nice easy nice easy red ball here so I'm going to take that and then got another red, red ball here and they'll start potting their reds now they're not too badly laid out and they might pot several of those balls um, but there are balls on the table that are going to prove them some problems later on like this ball over here you've got to get into a good position you've got to be very good with your cue ball to control to get in the right position to be able to pot this red this red over here doesn't go to that pocket or that pocket or that pocket it'll go over here but again the yellow's in the way you've got to get good position on that and you could they would quite easily especially a beginner that's not quite mastered cue ball control properly could easily find themselves in a position where they miss a ball and the problem with that is that it's not about how far ahead you get in the game of pool. I've seen people um, sitting at a match and say, oh, who's, who's winning? Oh, they've, they've potted four of their yellows and they've only potted one red, so they're ahead. It makes absolutely no difference in this game. It's all about who pots the black. That's the only thing that's important. It doesn't matter how far you're ahead. Um, and a good, a good analogy with that would be to, I mean, if you thought about a game of football, for example, so if we put the balls back on the table, um, so if you were seven nil up at half time um, in a game of football, you're quite likely to go on and win the game. When you're that far ahead, you'd have to be pretty poor to lose from that position. But in the game of pool, it doesn't work like that. So let's, let's imagine we go one nil up and we put another ball and then we go two nil up and put another ball and we go three nil up. Put, put another ball and go four nil up. 5-0, 6-0, and then we don't get great position and we miss our last red and ends up over here. So, okay, we're a long way ahead. We're 6-0 we're up. But now look at the table from a yellow player's point of view. At the start of that game, the yellows weren't that easy there were there were reds blocking pockets there were things in the way that made it difficult if you were coming to the table now as the yellow player look at all this space you've got you've got so much more room there's less balls to run into less problems yes you've still got a couple of balls over here that um, a little bit tricky but you've got tons of space so they've got a much better chance of clearing up if they go for the balls at this point than the red player has They've also got another added advantage that they can make things really difficult for the red player. So because they might want to develop these two over here and not too short, confident if they can pot those, they could quite simply just play um, a little snooker. Play down here, keep that ball in play, make sure you don't make it, um, don't put it on a cushion or anything, get a snooker on the red player and okay, the, the, the red player might get out of it 
They might try and come off here and try and go into it. They might get there. They might not make it. They've got that ball out. But they've developed these a little bit further and they've put their red into another position that's not, um, not that easy to get to. So the yellow player again could try and go for a clearance or they could maybe try and pot this yellow up here but make sure that they leave the yellow down here so if they miss it, they leave another snooker. So they could go for this yellow up here. Don't make it. But the red is snookered again and they're in another snooker. And that could go on for a while and eventually the red player might miss that. Miss the ball. And now look at the yellow player. They've got all of their balls in really open positions, really easy to pot. Um, depending on what rule set they're going to play, they're either going to have two two visits if they're playing world rules, or um, maybe if they're playing international rules, they might have ball in hand, so they could they could place the ball um, you know, for their more difficult one. And they've got a re really easy clearance. So being ahead in the sense of potting more balls is not an advantage at all. So when do you decide to do it? So I'm not saying that you don't pot any balls. Let your, pers let your opponent get to this position because that's not always the right thing to do. Um, but if they are going ahead and potting ball after ball, don't panic about it. Um, it's probably going in your favour. So say, um, say the game was still early on and the red player had potted a couple of balls and then ran out of, run out, ran out of position and um, you were coming in as the yellow player. You might look at this at this point and say, all right, okay, I'm not quite ready to go for game at this point. I've got one yellow over here that doesn't go at the moment. This one's a little bit awkward. So what do you do instead? As I said, I'm not saying to not pot a ball, but what you don't want to do is pot all your easy balls and just leave these difficult ones. Otherwise, you're doing exactly the same as the red player was doing earlier. So you've got two options. You either look to play a snooker. There might be an obvious snooker on, there might not. Or you just look to develop your balls, make something a bit easier, whilst making sure that you don't leave it open for your opponent to pot all of their balls either. So... In this case, we might just want to just sort of try and sort out this yellow over here. If we play that yellow out here and leave the white over here, we're not really leaving a pot for the red player. So we could um, we could possibly even play over behind this this yellow. So we could get that yellow out a little bit. It's in a much better position than it was a minute ago. It's potable to here and here. And we've not left a shot for the red player. Okay, they've got a long they've got a long pot up here. But again, if they start going for those, they've still got a ball that's difficult and they might pot a few more and make things easy for you. So my advice is to bide your time a little bit. If you've got balls that are difficult and you're and you can see that your player is just potting things without worrying about any of the problems then take your time to develop some of your balls, get them into positions where you're far more comfortable that you are going to pot them when you come to the table. Hopefully they might move a few things out of the way and then all of a sudden you might find yourself in a much better position where you've got the space to go for the clearance. Okay, you might still not make it. You might go for it and you might mess it up. And that's obviously something that will come as you become a better player. You know, you're... You're not going to clear up in one go every time. Um, as I said, you can always pot a couple of balls. You know, if you're if you're thinking, well, I'm not going to pot seven in a row, you you could pot a couple of um, of balls and wait until you're wait until you've got sort of three or four left, um, and then you might stand a much better chance of doing it, especially if the other player is getting down to to one ball or less. Um, So it's not that you don't that you don't pot any balls at all, but just try not to just clear things out of the way unnecessarily, but especially potting all your easy balls and leaving your difficult balls. Where this gets tricky 
um, and I've found this myself a lot, as you get better, um, you know, your ultimate goal is to try and pop all of the balls and we all would love to be able to clear up the table every time. And as you get more confident and you get better cue ball control, you start to be more confident when you look at the layout of the table thinking, yeah, I can clear those up. Yeah, I can go for that. And I found in particular, I lost, as I got a better player, I actually started to lose a lot more games because I would play countless games where I would pop six or seven of my colours and then not quite get position on the black or not quite get bit position on my last ball. And then my opponent would come in, not as good a player as me technically, but they've got so much space, it's easy for them to clear up or for them to snooker me and make my life difficult, give themselves two shots or ball in hand and then go on to lose the game. And I would lose a lot of games that way. And I still do, I still because I like to play aggressive and I like to go for to game. So finding that balance of when to go for it is very difficult. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's something you need to think about. Don't just willy-nilly pop balls um, because you are making your opponent's life easier. You will learn the more you play um, when you think you can go for a clearance. Um, I can't. Every clearance is different, so I can't say this is the right time, this is the wrong time. There's no such thing. But it's something that you need to be aware of and also something that you need to not panic about if it happens to you. If the other player is a long way ahead, i.e. One, one ball left, it doesn't mean they're winning. It doesn't mean they're thrashing you. Don't worry about whether you're going to get seven balled. A lot of people, they'll, they'll think, oh, my opponent's potted all their balls. I've got to pot a ball just because they don't want to get seven balled. That makes no difference, really. You're much better off trying to get a snooker um, and not potting a ball um, than you are trying to just pot a ball for no reason at all. Hopefully that um, that helps and it's something that you can use in your game when you're starting out. And um, don't be afraid of being behind because there is no such thing. It's all about who pots the black ball last. <laughs> If you want to see more practice routines and pool tutorials, then please remember to subscribe. And if you're interested in any of the equipment I use in this video, then there are links in the description below.